Yes, indeed. What's going on, beautiful people out there in the internet and in the physical world, in Web3. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful day. Yet again, it's a blessing to wake up and do this. I can't believe it's already semester two. And this is lesson seven of NGO Radio Terra's free lessons for all ages, all levels, all across the world. So I'm e and I'm really happy to be here. Um, I wanted to just discuss a couple pro tips about breathing, um, a couple things about posture, a couple things about the body and movement. Um, some of the things that don't get talked about in drum lessons enough, I don't think. Um, and that is that, you know, the efficiency of your movements also makes your groove what it is, right? So the more you're moving your body around, and, and, and I'm not saying that you can't express yourself physically the way you feel comfortable, but there, there are some things that can help you stay in the groove, stay in the pocket a little bit physically. And of course, every, every body is different, um, but there's some things that can help you stay in, in the pocket or stay in the groove consistently that have to do with not moving around so much. And, and we just, we call this... Um, the, um, this is like ergonomics. So if you're here, you're going to want to make sure that you can get back to this place after you do a fill. So you want to think about how much notes you're going to play in that fill. Get back to here, or you can just do something simple. Right? So, you want to make sure that you're not taking yourself too far away from the main idea that you're at, right? Which is at this hi hat part. I'll, I have to make sure I plan for that. So I can get back here on one. So it's really important that we make sure that we get right back to the same physical place on the drum set that we that we are supposed to be at after going for a fill. So if I want to stay right here. I'm probably going to make sure that if I do a fill, it'll just be on this tom. Right? That way I can be ready for what comes next. Instead of spending time over here on the ride cymbal, which might end up being a little bit more difficult for me to come right back here. So... sure that I'm taking enough breath for me to not get tired or for my back to not get tense. And this happens a lot when you're playing up tempo. So for instance, 
it's beat four and not three or two or, or one is because beat four, if you emphasize it, it is the beat right before the start of the next bar. So technically you're anticipating the next idea. And as a drummer, our, our role as timekeepers in playing this very demonstrative rhythmic instrument, uh, our sound cuts through. Our idea is the primary, primary idea that the audience gets to feel and hear first. So if we place a rhythmic beat on beat four before anybody plays one, which is essentially the foundation of the groove for the next bar, right? If we're thinking bar by bar at the microscopic level, then we're always one step ahead of the soloist. We're always in, in a positive way, right? We're, we're providing syncopation and we're providing weight. That's what an accent does. It, it provides more weight than less weight to help anchor the soloist, anchor the idea, anchor the bass player, anchor the groove. Instead of, if we play it on one, then our idea starts at the same time as everybody else's idea. And that's more the point, is that you, you don't want to be playing at the same time as everybody else, yet you do want to be playing something to support what they're playing. Um, and again, this is a concept for an improvisational space, for a jazz space, for like, for a live music soloing space. Um, not necessarily for groove, although it can be. So for instance, if I were to play just groove, and this is me wanting to play a, a non-repetitive yet solid groove for a, a, a soloist in a funk context, I could do the same thing. Starting my idea on beat four and not finishing the idea. One, two, one, two, three. simpler if I were just supporting like a funk situation. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm still in the groove. I'm still in my internal click. I'm still playing something that's metronomically in time. But where I'm beginning and ending my phrasing is not just one, two, three, four, one. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. anticipate the next bar. And so that's what that concept is all about. Anyways, um, I am, let's see, uh, I am going to play a little bit of, um, call and answer with you guys and let you 
take your four bars as I, as I play my four bars. So I'm gonna play four and leave four bars of space for you. Um, today's gonna have to be a little bit shorter of a lesson, so um, I apologize for that, but next week we'll double up. Again, breathing is super essential if you wanna keep up tempos up, if you wanna make sure that you don't drag, if you wanna make sure you have the endurance to play for five, 10, 12, 15 minutes, um, at least on an up-tempo song. Um, you know, whether or not it's like a punk rock thing. Right? Or if it's an up-tempo jazz thing, like... So you have to take a breath with your tummy halfway out, all the way from the, the, the floor through the ceiling. The biggest, deepest breath you can muster. And that will help you get through. Thank you, Rashid Ali, for that. Um, body positioning. You know, if you're, if you're spending the majority of the song over here, try not to spend too much time over here. I think I could have said that a little bit more concise then, but that's basically the vibe. Just... If you're over here, try and try and get some fills going on in this area so that you're so that this this body positioning doesn't have to change to something like over here. Because although you can physically get back in time on one, you might not if you're not if you're not trained for that, if you're if you're not um, you know practiced practiced up for that. So the other thing is um, you know that we wanna we wanna always be um, we just want to be thinking about our bodies while we're playing because you can get hurt if you're reaching for something like if you if your symbol is way too high over here or way too high over here or if you've got uh, a snare drum that's really really low you've got to play on that all night you could hurt yourself and you don't want to get carpal tunnel you don't want to get tendonitis you don't want to develop some of the things that drummers tend to uh, to develop so with that being said I'm gonna sign off with a little bit of four and four and I appreciate you guys this has been lesson seven and I thank you immensely appreciate you NGO Radio Terra here we go <laughs> <laughs>